Hi, Tony here again. Well, it's time for another video and uh, something I've been working on uh, for uh, a little while now, um, which is uh, probably why I haven't got around to posting many videos. And that is um, a standby instrument uh, from Mint Condiment called the SAM uh, MD302. It comes in a horizontal and a, a vertical. Well, actually, it's the same instrument. Um, but for the purposes of Air Manager, um, I've had to split it into a horizontal and a vertical instrument. And you can configure this uh, instrument to show uh, different displays on different screens, or you can uh, mount um, the uh, adjustment knob on the on the left or the right. Uh, for instance, on the vertical uh, display and on the horizontal display, you have an option of uh, swapping uh, the attitude and and the air data over. So let's. Um, go ahead and uh, well actually before we uh, before we power them up let's have a look at the uh, user properties for these um, instruments there are um, quite a lot of um, user properties um, associated um, with these particular um, instruments so um, I'll just bring it up and we can uh, have a quick run uh, through so you can see I've got both of the instruments in a, a little test panel here uh, and the user properties we can flick back between the two but essentially they're the same on the on the two instruments or very very similar so you can see uh, initially um, we uh, I've already configured the hardware there for the knob and the button that's the only control on the instrument so you can uh, select um, what you want to uh, use there for the uh, for the hardware uh, connections and also uh, what type of encoder you're going to use whether it be a one two or four detent per pulse um, I'd um, come a cropper with that when I actually tested it with uh, hardware and I realized I had the wrong setting so obviously it's configurable so you can choose which one uh, you want the particular one that I had set up was a two dent so I made that the uh, the default you choose which electrical bus um, you want the instrument to be powered from just normally bus one but um, you have a choice of the six X plane ones I think it says there if you're using FSX and prepared um, you got to select bus one because they don't uh, have the multiple uh, buses um, whether or not um, you're going to sync with uh, data or you're going to obtain data from the pilot or the co-pilots um, set of um, parameters out of the sim um, so um, we've selected pilot in this particular case uh, now the, the top one here that we're looking at is the horizontal so um, the choice there for the horizontal display is whether or not you want the attitude on the left or the right um, so we're going to choose left but you can see for the vertical you don't get a choice with that in the vertical orientation in the real world the attitude is always on the top on the vertical um, if you mount it in a vertical uh, orientation so the only choice there is whether or not you're going to mount it with the knob on the right or you're going to twist it uh, through 180 and have the uh, the knob on the left uh, so knob on the left or the right we'll leave it on uh, what do we have it on doesn't matter knob on the right um, and then the horizon display there's two types there you can have a shaded type display or a flat so I'm going to leave it on shaded on that one I think I've got the other one set to flat so we can see the difference uh, and then a roll type then uh, as with a lot of instruments you can have a choice between a fixed uh, pointer or a fixed scale so uh, in this case we've got fixed pointer and the other one we've got fixed scale so again we can see the difference um, whether or not we want a heading display so on the real instrument this is normally uh, you either f uh, connect it up to uh, an external magnetometer that uh, you can buy as part of the uh, an optional add-on uh, for the instrument so you get a head and display or you can connect it into an existing um, uh, heading uh, source that you have on board the aircraft like a, a primary flight display for instance uh, the only downside to that of course is if you lose that information then you lose the heading display from the remote so you can choose uh, magnetometer as we have done there but you have a choice uh, from the sim to choose the information from the pilot side the co-pilot side or in fact the remote magnetometer um, so there's a few little tricky bits uh, to actually get that to uh, to work because predominantly you only have the pilot and the co-pilot's information so um, we use some other information to uh, to generate the magnetometer one there for that so trying to keep as, uh, as, as true to the real instrument here as possible um, then you have the option to uh, sync with an ex external barrow source so again um, you can leave this unticked and the um, 
Colesman window and the uh, barometer setting uh, will be done uh, on the instrument and not have any effect on the SIM controls whatsoever or you can choose to sync uh, with the uh, SIM control so that basically means that you still have um, local uh, control of the barometer on the instrument but if um, the control is adjusted within the um, primary source um, then it will sync automatically and you'll see how that operates when I sh when I show the uh, the uh, operation of the instrument airspeed units uh, knots miles per hour kilometers airspeed minimum you have a choice of 20 30 and 40 all of these settings by the way are taken from the real instrument so these are the choices that you get when you're doing the initial configuration so this is in in, in effect like the uh, the setup um, before the or as part of the installation of the instrument um, the other settings that can be changed uh, by the pilot in flight are contained within a menu uh, system uh, or not very much a, a system it's not very deep it's just one level um, but some basic uh, parameters that you can change in flight um, so where will we up to airspeed minimum okay so now we start getting a little bit more complex in the real instrument it has um, multiple settings for setting up the uh, colored um, airspeed bars for your um, indicated airspeed along the side and as a, as a uh, part of that um, you can set up a uh, um, maximum Mac operating speed um, you can set up some VNE speeds further down I'll get to that in a minute and you can also set up um, a barber pole uh, type um, limit display if one of these individual ranges you can see here are set up for barber pole then it will take the lowest of the uh, MMO the VNE and the uh, the selected range uh, limit and display the barber pole at that limit so that's the way it works in the real world so that's what uh, I've modeled in this particular instrument so that's uh, fairly complex in terms of the operation uh, of the um, of the colored uh, bars and tapes but again you'll see that so what we've got set up here I'm just, uh, in the uh, the default uh, Cessna 172 here so I've set up some just uh, basic uh, bars here on this one instrument and the other one I've not uh, yes I've not set anything on that one so you can just see that's just a blank but we can play around with that and you can see how some of the uh, some of the parameters are, are changed so essentially there's eight ranges uh, that you can select as per the real instrument uh, you can set up whether or not you want it to be off, whether or not you want a full bar, a half width bar um, f for like your flaps range, uh, that sort of thing, or whether or not you want a, um, a radial um, type bar or, or a, um, a tick mark in effect um, for uh, a red or a barber pole or some other thing, some, uh, um, the blue or the, or the reds for instance in a twin. Uh, you can set them up to uh, to be whatever you uh, you want to be. So I think that was on half, wasn't it? Yeah. So you can see there you set up you set up the type of um, display it's going to be. Then you choose the color. So the options are blue, green, red, white, yellow, and bar, which is the barber pole. We've done white, and then a low and a high limit for where you want those uh, to appear. So if you select um, the rad type then it only takes the lower figures because it only obviously needs one number there because that's literally just a, a tick mark at that particular uh, centered around that particular airspeed so that's the the range is in effect there's four settings there for each range so you can see there we've got range one range two and it goes all the way on to uh, uh, to range uh, eight there you go range eight uh, and then we go into um, VNE table. Now, for the VNE table, I think there's seven settings from memory. Um, and what this enables you to uh, do, um, it will always start. At, um, the the first point will always start at an altitude of zero. So it's, this is just in here to remind you of that fact. You doesn't, you don't actually, uh, you can't actually change that. Um, but just to complete the the X point uh, for that data point, um, it's zero altitude and then you say what your VNE speed is um, at um, an altitude of zero um, and you can then obviously vary uh, so some aircraft may have settings where their their VNE speed uh, varies with the altitude and that's what this is essentially for so you can essentially essentially set up a, a plot of a line and you can get the VNE speed and um, the 
um, coloured bar displayed um, along the airspeed tape will uh, interpolate between these values uh, to get the exact um, V and E speed for a given altitude. So you can leave that all set to zeros and it won't take that into account but as I said uh, at the very beginning with the barber's pole uh, logic um, it takes the lowest of whatever the v the calculated V&E speed is, uh, the MMO uh, speed, and whether or not a barber pole or or uh, either a full display or a half or or a, um, a radial type display is con is configured as part of those range uh, settings. So that took a little bit of work to get all that uh, working, but that works very well now. Then we're into lighting. Um, I've used this uh, similar thing on some of my other instruments. So essentially, we've got a, um, a um, fascia uh, lighting effect. So they're like uh, that is uh, the dimming of the actual bezel and the knob and everything else in terms of the cockpit ambient light. When it gets dark, um, the instrument itself, the surround and everything gets gets darker. That's not the display. That's just the just the ambient light, the fascia lighting effects. Hence the name. Then you have a choice of um, what dimmer uh, you want to use. So if you're going to use the external dimmer, then there's a choice here, uh, which I'll explain in a minute. But if you want to use the uh, external dimmer in X-Plane, there's a choice of multiple uh, dimmers, um, as it explains here. You choose which one you want to, um, uh, uh, or which one you've got configured, or the particular aircraft that you've got this in is configured to control um, what um, what particular setting um, within the sim because they do vary so um, you you can choose uh, whichever one you want uh, here same with the panel so the panel lights are uh, in a section essentially um, your lights underneath the uh, glare shield um, or the uh, post lights for instance that light up the illumination on the panel as opposed to the separate instrument uh, lights again you you can choose the dimmer for that because again they do vary and then here, this next setting is whether or not you want um, the instrument to control its own dimming. So again, in the real world instrument, there's a, a photo cell um, within the instrument and you can choose whether or not you want that photo cell to control the dim level of the screen on the instrument or whether or not you want an external dimmer, as in one of these, to control the brightness um, So from a dim bus. And as part of that uh, configuration, it also has a... Um, um, a dimming curve so you can set up uh, different X and Y points on this I think six parameters is that right I remember yeah six so six points you can plot on a graph so you can have different dim levels and again it will interpolate between these uh, values to give you the dim level according to that input whether that be from the photo cell and I think that's that only applies really to uh, X plane because uh, FSX and prepared don't have that uh, feature um, or whether or not it's coming from the external dimmer, but you can essentially say, you know, when I've got so many, uh, when I've got so much intensity selected by the external dimmer, wherever that falls within this curve, give me this amount of brightness on the display, so you can vary it uh, to be in uh, whatever you want. You can see the default here is pretty much linear across the way, so you've got the same parameter in the X and the, uh, the Y all the way up. So that basically gives you just a, a, a linear um, a linear line um, and a linear response but you can play around with those numbers to get whatever kind of um, effect you want again modeled on the real instrument that is a feature from the real instrument and that's pretty much all of it obviously the usual uh, position um, from any instrument within a panel within um, air manager so let's go ahead and uh, power up so when you first power up the instruments they go through a splash screen where you get the software version and the uh, runtime, and then you get red X's for a short period of time. Then it should boot into the normal um, display. So you can see the slight differences now in what we set up in the user uh, properties there. You can see we've got the attitude configured on the on the left there on the horizontal one, but you can have it on the right, and in which case the air data uh, flicks over onto the left there. Uh, and on the vertical one, you can have the knob on the right or the uh, the left. Um, this is the shaded you can see where it's shaded down towards the horizon there in terms of the shaded display and that's the flat display there's no shading on that one you can see the difference here you do probably also notice there's some different um, 
um, symbolic aeroplane symbols here between the different instruments that's something that you can com uh, the pilot can configure so that's in a, a different setting that wasn't part of user properties but I'll show that uh, a little bit later in the video um, I've got the heading turn heading tape turned off on this particular one that was one of the user properties you can see we've got the heading tape here on this particular one um, I think that's probably most of the differences in terms of the the two uh, the two different orientations so maybe uh, what we'll do is we'll we'll get the sim fired up and we'll actually go for a, a little bit of a, a flyer I'll just have a, a muck about and um, see how we get on Oh, well, first before we do that we'll just um, show the the barrow setting so you can see at the moment the bat the it, the word barrow here has got these little arrows if you can just see that uh, next to the uh, or the word barrow and that basically means they they basically uh, show that um, this instrument is in sync with the aircraft um, setting if we were to um, change the knob here and alter the barrow so as the barrow is changing it highlights in green there and for a short period of time and then defaults back to the thing so you can see there's no arrows in there because we're not in sync with the uh, with the aircraft value but if we were to bring it back to that value you can see the error the arrows come back because uh, obviously that's what we've got it uh, set to but we could we could zero ourselves right up if we wanted to there um, and you can see we're a little bit we're a little bit off and then if I adjust it in the uh, sim uh, you'll see that as soon as I adjust it in the sim it will jump straight to the value from the sim and and go green to indicate that so you can see I've just notched up from 299 or 2 uh, two nine and nine of three now. So there you go. That's the, and you can see it stays obviously synced the whole time because I'm controlling this now from the, uh, from the sim itself. So that's the barrow adjustment, and of course they're they're um, because they're two in, uh, separate instruments. You can see on on this one. Uh, I'm adjusting it and this one's not changing because it's local to the actual uh, instrument so you can make them different if you want to but of course if you adjust the sim because they're both set to sync um, they'll both adjust to the same value as they do there so let's leave them sync for the moment and um, let's go for a bit of a um, a bit of a flyer so I'm just gonna taxi out I should have uh, got this on the runway already really shouldn't I but not to worry okay there you can see the coloured tapes coming in there now uh, on the one that we have configured, I only configured that on the horizontal uh, instrument. Not really paying a, too much attention here with the flying while I'm trying to video, uh, but um, there you get to see. And then you can also see that on the uh, on the horizontal uh, display, we also have this uh, magenta um, trend bar here, which we have turned off on the uh, the other one. Again, that's a, I think that's a setting uh, within the uh, within the pilot menu but we'll have a look at that uh, in a minute and you can see but I just wanted to show um, what we're doing there no oh, it was my fault there I was just messing about from previously and uh, I hadn't retracted the flaps the airspeed was uh, rather low so you can see that it scrolls quite nicely with the um, With the displays there and you can see the difference in the roll display now so you see the horizontal one has a as a um, a fixed pointer and the scale itself moves and and the other one um, the scale is fixed and the pointer is moving So just a quick uh,
quick look at the uh, the display there and you can see the difference between the full and the half bar now where you've got the green in the full bar and the uh, the white obviously uh, not in a uh, in a low pass there so there you go that's uh, not really uh, just messing about here really but um, just to show the uh, the instrument it's coming to land there just so you can see it sort of uh, in operation and then um, probably the other thing to to say is that um, this will actually um, account for failures so what we can do is we can um, and it and it and I've I've used um, data refs and and information from the sim that are as um, well, not say redundant but they're they're as um, failure proof as I couldn't get them so for instance this is meant to be a standby instrument and it's meant to be your, your kind of last resort really if you if your primary uh, systems uh, fail so I've not used the traditional uh, data refs I've tried to use some of the ones that maybe are not so susceptible to failure however you, it's still plumbed into the pito and static system so it will um, it will respond to um, let's see if we can um, Um, find some um, I think they're in sensor aren't they yes um, so it will respond for instance if the uh, if the pitot tube is is blocked um, it will um, it will red X so let's just do that there you go so um, in that particular instance it uses airspeed for the attitude display so that's red x and the air uh, airspeed itself is red x although um, because the uh, altitude only needs a static that's still okay but if you were to foul that then you'd get a different obviously combination of x's but you can you can foul uh, accordingly uh, there so that's the uh, that's the failures. Um, I mentioned about the brightness and the dimming, so um, it's difficult to uh, sh show that because uh, I'd have to mus mess about with the thing. But I can probably show. I think the right hand instrument is on the is on the dimmer, so you can probably see that that will dim down and um, come back up again. Whereas this one here is on the internal. So if I were to change, for instance. Um, the time of day you see that as it gets darker this one this one would uh, dim down so if you were on a uh, around about that sort of time um, at dusk uh, you may start to see it dimming down actually in flight as it as as the ambient light conditions get darker it it will start to dim down too but you also have a manual control so the manual control is over and on top uh, above the the sensor so you can offset the sensor if you're not quite happy with the response of the sensor and that's where you can play around with that that dim curve um, to actually get the response to be what you need it to be but um, you can actually override the dim setting and you do that by essentially just clicking the the button on the end of the knob here so normally the knob when you just turn it it adjusts the barrel as we saw earlier but then you can just click the button and you see now you're in this uh, dim uh, mode and you have the option to offset what the actual sensor is doing by an amount and it will remember what that offset is so as the sensor level goes up and down it will just apply that offset also to it so it will still go up it will still go uh, if it gets um, brighter outside it will still get brighter on the display here uh, but bearing in mind that offset that you've applied it it will keep that offset but it only remembers that uh, for each uh, power cycle so if you were to power cycle it resets that offset um, back to zero again um, let's uh, take that up a bit higher again so that's the uh, and then you can get rid of it like that or you can just start the dim and then after a few seconds it will just uh, disappear I think it's about 10 seconds there you go 
And then to get into the um, the information uh, menu, which is the menu that you can uh, use in flight, uh, that will overwrite the attitude display. So depending on uh, which um, you're using the horizontal or the vertical, I tend to be just using the horizontal one here, is you push but you hold the button this time. So rather than just a quick click like you do there with the brightness, you push it and you hold it. The brightness will come up temporarily and then it'll enter this um, options menu where you can select uh, altitude units so that will that will add um, and it will time out again uh, just like the other one so we didn't do anything there while I was talking so let's just enter that again we'll, c we'll come into um, so you, you push to uh, enter across the menu and then you have a choice between whatever the parameters are so if I select meters you can see now we've gone to meters and the display is adjusted accordingly uh, we, we obviously don't want it in meters but uh, we'll go back to feet and then barrow units is another one um, so into millibars there uh, that's quite nice and then oops then you come down to uh, symbol so symbol is where you get to choose the type of um, setting that you want so you can see here when you're in the uh, menu I'll just keep toggling up and down I was just going to time out but um, when you're in this uh, main menu here you just get the grade selection of what the actual current setting is for these these five items uh, here at the top so we're currently with feet millibars uh, we've got the delta display we've got the uh, mask off and we've got the trend on so um, if we go um, whoops, into symbol again you can see the choices are delta which is what we had here then we've got uh, split delta right, let's exit the menu show you what the split delta looks like that's that and then the traditional um, whoops, the traditional is this one here um, uh, you can have that. Uh, then you've got uh, the mask, which is uh, a bit of a, f a funny feature, but um, again, part of the real instrument. So it gives you like a s more of a cylindrical uh, display by putting a, a mask uh, on the outside of the uh, attitude display there to give it more of a representation of a, of a, of a circular, a traditional type looking instrument. I don't particularly like that much myself, but that's again part of the uh, real instrument in terms of the settings um, I think we'll turn that off I don't like it uh, and then the trend is the uh, the trend that you saw up the side uh, here you can see this one has got the little tick marks ready for the trend this one hasn't got the tick marks at the moment um, so we can we can turn that off and you can see they'll disappear and then obviously you can turn them back on again and then the trend will work so again that's just a preference if you want that or you don't want that um, and then an info item here which would normally take you in to look at all the configuration items on the real instrument um, but they're obviously stored in our case in the in the user properties so just a note to say uh, review those user properties to get those config settings and then an exit menu but again if you don't do anything this will this will come out of this uh, or you can just select that exit menu as I've done a couple of times already just to exit this particular menu uh, but there is a timeout and there it goes uh, you can see there on that very last option of the uh, menu you can see there's a power off that's greyed out at the moment and the reason it's greyed out is you can't actually power the instrument off other than using the instrument power you can only do that if you're on battery when you uh, and you're under uh, certain conditions so whenever the airspeed is uh, below um, whatever you've set uh, I think there was a choice of 20 30 or 40 if you remember from the user uh, settings or the user properties should I say um, whatever you've got set there if you're below that then uh, it, it enables um, that to become uh, not grayed out um, whenever you're on battery so you may want to power off or you may choose not to so what I'll sh go ahead and do is show you now the emergency battery because now this is this standby instrument and it's got as a lot of standby instruments have now um, a battery backup built in internally in the unit so it's pretty redundant from an electrical failure point of view it will carry on working for up to about an hour that functionality is modeled um, so it will deplete the um, virtual battery um, after about an hour uh, and it will provide a status as that gets depleted with a little uh, battery symbol uh, up here in the right hand uh, corner of the instrument so what we'll do is we'll go ahead now and we'll turn our instrument power off and you can see when you initially first 
power off you get the little battery symbol with the state of charge currently you can see we're probably at about three quarters uh, charged now and it asks do we want to power off now if we don't do anything um, it will power off because our airspeed is below 30 so it assumes we're on the ground and it will just power off automatically once that countdown reaches zero or we can choose to power off ourselves now if we power off ourselves it just powers off if we power back up again it will boot back up again you can see that we're independent there this one didn't because we didn't select it to so again we remove uh, the power again we get the same message this time if we select uh, on you can see now the message has disappeared and we're just literally so the aircraft power is off but we've chosen that we want to keep the uh, the unit on um, if you are in flight and you were over your minimum speed that you'd set you'd still get the battery symbol but uh, you wouldn't necessarily um, get that um, um, on off uh, message come up because um, you, you, it's just distracting you obviously you're in flight you're going to want it to carry on working uh, but you have the option if you want to uh, force the uh, force the power down so we're going to say uh, on um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go into the uh, info menu and you can see now power off is uh, not grayed out anymore so you can still select power off there and off so that's the um, MD302 um, in horizontal and vertical versions. It does work with uh, X-Plane and FSX and Prepared. Um, although it's fair to say that the function, uh, a lot of the more advanced functions, um, because X-Plane provides um, you know all the choice of the dimmers and, and the failures are uh, a lot better catered for. Um, you get better benefit out of that but it works very well uh, in FSX and prepared as well as well as even some of the failures uh, and the general use of the instrument and the menus and everything else uh, still works exactly the same so that's it thanks for watching hope you enjoyed um, the SAM MD302 keep watching for some more videos thanks <laughs>